think I'm getting some good shots of this one. Everything just lined up with this fox. The lighting was perfect. Hi everyone and welcome to another video and welcome to my bedroom I guess. Usually I would be out in a field by this stage of a video or by the coast or something like that but no I'm in my room in London getting ready to go out. It's night time as you can tell by the lights and that can only mean one thing which is urban foxes. In this video I'm going to show you how to photograph them with no flash so I'm going to just bring you along with me hopefully find some get some nice pictures and give you any tips and tricks that might help you out if this is something you're looking to do. The first thing I wanna talk about just while we're still inside is safety. Now you're going out at night in a city, um, you've gotta be careful, especially you're carrying a camera around. I'm carrying a pretty big camera around, it's got a 300 millimeter lens on, we'll get to lenses and stuff later, but you know, maybe it's better if you're carrying like a 100 millimeter or something like that, that's a bit more compact and, and is less obvious. Um, so yeah, I just want to say, be safe. Only do this in an area that you know really well and that you feel safe in. If you don't feel comfortable doing it, then just don't do it. Do it with a friend maybe, or take your car out so that you've got that close by. Um, so if you don't feel safe, you can just get out of there. Um, or wait until end of May, June, July, and go out just before sunrise on those early mornings around half three, four, um, when it's getting light, you'll feel a little bit more safe then as well. So. Yeah, that's another great time to do this. But I want to make use of the street lights, maybe get a little bit creative. Um, so yeah, let's go and do that. One thing I'm doing just to sort of be a little bit less conspicuous, I'm going to actually just take the lens hood off this. Um, I haven't even put it on yet, but I'm going to leave this at home because obviously that looks a lot bigger than just that. Um, and then I've got this little bag that <laughs> it doesn't fit completely in here, but... Um, you know, if someone's coming or something like that, I can just tuck it away a little bit. So it maybe just looks like I've got a shoulder bag on or something like that. Uh, I'll always like cross the road if I see someone coming down or something like that. All of these things just to stay safe. Um, but anyway, let's go. Let's have a fun time. I'm going to show you how we do this. Okay, so it's about five past 11 at night now, um, which is probably the earliest I would go out to photograph urban foxes. The later the better, because there are less people and more foxes. And the best night for it is your local bin day. So have a look, see when that is. And yeah, that's when there'll be more foxes out. They'll be going through the bins. I know people hate it and it is a bit of a pain, but um, I don't know. If you're watching this video, then presumably you love foxes like me, so it's not so much of an issue. Um, but yeah, my bin day is a Monday. I work in the week, so it's a bit difficult to go out late on a weeknight. Um, but it's something I do from time to time and probably will do in this video at some point. I won't film everything tonight, which is a Friday, by the way. Um, how cool am I, right? Um, but yeah, I'll film this over a few nights in the next few weeks because it's a challenge. I won't get everything I want tonight. It's dark out there, there's going to be, you know, low shutter speeds, lots of blurry images. So yeah, I think it's it's ambitious to get a lot of shots in one night. That's why I want to do this over the course of a few weeks. Um, but yeah, it's, as I said, five past 11 tonight. Let's get going and see if we can get some decent pictures tonight and see if I can share any good tips with you. So I'm out of the house now and I've got a rough idea of where I'm going to go, but I like to keep it pretty local. So I'm just going to wander around um, the streets near my house. Um, I'm in North London, but you can do this anywhere really. Like all of London has so many foxes. Um, Bournemouth, I think has the most foxes per kilometer or something. I've just seen a fox ahead of me already. Just goes to show how many there are. Um, I'll talk to you in a minute about what you do when you see a fox and the best chance you've got of getting pictures of it. Uh, but yeah, I'm just going to wander around. Um, I guess one of the first things to talk about is your lens and your camera settings. So um, you ideally, well, I think the lens is the most important thing. You're going to want one that has an aperture of f2.8, really. I think any higher, it's really hard 
to get good photos because it's so dark so you need to let in as much light as possible to the camera lens so that you can get your shutter speed as high as possible um, so yeah that's why I've got a 300 millimeter f2.8 the focal length anything from 100 upwards or even lower to be honest you can get some cool wide angle shots you can get super close to foxes I don't bait them personally but it's probably the only species that I'd say it's not an issue if you do just make sure you're giving them something healthy and I might explore it at some point in this video I've never done it before but you can get pretty creative with it so let's see how we get on I, ideally I don't want to but like I said it's the only animal I would ever think about doing it with and I would never do it with a rural fox just an urban one because you can see behind me like there's loads of trash out there they're going through bins they're going to eat that kebab that you dropped when you were drunk last night so you know if you give them something healthy it's not the worst thing in the world but yeah let's see how we get on um then in terms of the actual camera body ideally full frame so that it can cope with low light a bit better it's got better iso capabilities so i've got the canon r6 mark ii but i've done this before with a 7d mark ii which is a crop sensor doesn't have the best iso performance but you know there's so much software out there like uh Lightroom is so good at getting rid of noise now. Um, you've got uh, top, Topaz as well. So it's not the end of the world if you get a noisy image. It's better to make sure you get something sharp. Um, so yeah, that's your, that's your sort of camera equipment and your camera settings. Don't worry too much if you don't have the fanciest gear. Maybe just restricts you a bit more in terms of where you want to place yourself. So somewhere where there's a bit more street light or security lights from houses and stuff like that. Um, anyway. Now I want to try and find a fox and start getting some pictures and show you how I do that. Now you basically want to be ready at any stage to photograph a fox because you just don't know when one might turn the corner or jump out of a hedge in front of you. So I'm going to show you now exactly what settings you should have or roughly what you should have on the back of your camera. Okay, so here are the camera settings I've got uh, on the back of my camera. Start here with the shutter speed. I like this to be at least 1 50th of a second. Sometimes I'll go a little lower, but 1 50th is already pretty low, especially with a 300 millimeter lens. There's generally a rule that your shutter speed should be double the focal length of your lens, but that would mean my shutter speed needs to be 1 600th of a second, which is just impossible in this light. So yeah, 1 50th of a second. And then to combat that, right, you're gonna get a lot of blurry images, but that's fine. Just make sure your drive mode is on high speed continuous and then just fire off as many shots as possible. And that way, hopefully one is gonna be sharp. Now let's look up here at the aperture. You want this to be at the lowest f-stop possible. So f2.8 is the lowest I can go on this lens and that's gonna let in the most light possible. Then your ISO. Now I've got mine set to 6400, uh, 6, but this might change depending on uh, the sort of street lights I'm surrounded by. But this essentially currently allows me to get a relatively decent exposure. Now, if I show you here, you'll see that I'm currently, uh, hold on, let me, I'm trying to balance this. You can see here, that currently I'm on minus two here. So I'm technically underexposed, but that's actually fine because when you're shooting in street lights, you can get a nice effect. It's almost like you're backlighting the images. And also you can, you know, boost up the exposure in Lightroom afterwards, so that's absolutely fine. So yeah, those are my settings. Now let's see if we can get any good shots with them. Okay, so this is awesome. I've just been sat on the curbside near that bin and we've got our first decent shots of the Fox, which I'm really happy about because it just goes to show those camera settings I showed you and the low shutter speed. It is possible to get a decent shot. Have a look at this. There you go, nice and sharp. A little bit noisy, but we can definitely clean that up. So yeah, I'm very happy with that one. And it's nice to get this. It's what I'll call the insurance shot. And that's not, you know, what you typically call an insurance shot where it's like you photograph the animal. Now you can get a little bit more creative. That's more that I'm pretty sure at some point when I do this, someone's gonna call the police on me because walking around with a big lens like this, it looks pretty shady, um, but yeah. If I get caught by the police or they come up to me, I can at least show them this and say, this is what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, it's always nice to have one of them on my camera just in case.
forgot to say as well i know we've seen one we've got a good picture i shared some tips but i've still got a few more to share with you so stick with me let's see what else we can get and i'll tell you some more secrets to getting decent images so i still haven't moved from that spot by the bin because they just keep coming past um, i haven't really got any other good shots yet i've got a little bit of video and it's just so cool to hang out with the foxes and i can hear them as well sort of chattering away a little bit so yeah super fun and yeah have a look at some of this footage and i'm sure we'll get some no more uh, pictures soon here we go they're a little bit timid but in general they're pretty curious about me and comfortable with me being here as well and that's the great thing about urban foxes is um, they're, they're pretty used to people, so yeah, they don't generally mind you being around. Oh, that's pretty cool. I think I'm getting some good shots of this one. Okay, so I've got two tips left to share with you. I'm going to share one of them now. Uh, that's because it's something that's just worked really well for me. Now, our first approach was to sit by that bin and wait, and that worked really well. But something else you can do is just to walk around and see if you can see foxes, and you will. If you're in London or Bournemouth or any big city, you will see them if you walk around. And when you see them, just stop still. They'll, they'll probably have seen you as well. If not, and they're walking towards you, then stop, lie down and wait for them to come towards you. But even if they spot you, it's not an issue because they'll, they'll spot you and they'll stop and look at you. At that point, if you then sit down or lie down, sometimes they can get really curious and start walking towards you. And that's when you can get really nice shots because they'll cautiously approach and then stop and look at you. Um, and this works, I'd say, 50% of the time. Sometimes the foxes are pretty wary and they'll just run off. But yeah, sometimes you get a curious one and you get lucky. And I've just seen two foxes together. Now, one of them was a little bit more wary. The other was a little bit more curious. But in the end, they both came towards me. And uh, I got some decent shots. Uh, they're both in the shot, which is nice. One of them's like blurred out and slightly blocked out in the background. But I think it makes for a pretty nice conversation. So yeah, have a look at this. And just remember that tip that... If you see them and you lie down or sit down on the pavement, they're pretty curious animals and often they'll come up towards you. So yeah, that's my second to last tip and I've got one more to share with you, which I'll do shortly. So it's getting pretty late now. It's just gone 2 a.m., which means I've been out for about three hours. I don't know how that's happened. Time is blown. Thought I had some foxes maybe, but I don't think it is. Um, anyway, yeah, I think I'm going to head back. But um, like I said, I had one more tip to share with you. I was hoping I could share it with another fox, but I haven't seen one uh, for a little while. Uh, at least not one that I've been able to photograph. So I'm still going to be able to show you this tip. And that is that you're going to struggle sometimes, depending on the camera you have and how light it might be with autofocus. And that means switching to manual focus. Now that is pretty logical, right? But the secret is, and this might not work for everyone, but if you've got a slightly newer camera, then you might've heard of something called focus peaking. And that means that when you're focusing manually, the camera will show you, it'll highlight where on the image is actually in focus. So I'll give you an example now, just on like this little, like a little bollard that I'll show you and that is really useful because if when it's dark and you're manual focusing it can be really hard to tell if you've got the animal in focus and at an aperture of f2.8 if you even just miss the focus slightly then the fox's face is going to be blurry which you don't want so yeah let me just share that with you quickly and then we'll wrap things up what we're essentially going to do is move our focusing ring can you see that kind of pinkish hue moving along the ground that's showing what's in focus. So if we move that towards that wall, we can see that it's in focus and you see those arrows above the box. They're gonna line up and go green once we get the wall in focus. There we go. 
So if your camera does have uh, focus peaking, I'd really recommend it. It's absolutely brilliant for these kind of situations. And just in general, if you're using manual focus and you're struggling to see what's actually in focus, then yeah, it's a brilliant, brilliant way to do that. I'm gonna wrap up the video here, I think. I know I said maybe I'll do a few nights and I think if I did a few more nights, then I could definitely get better pictures, get a bit more creative as well. But I'm really happy with what I got just in one night and I'm pretty content that I've shared my tips with you and I hope those are gonna help you out. Uh, let me know in the comments if you've got any other tips that you could share with me or if you go out and use these tips, let me know how you get on with them. Uh, I'd love to see some of your pictures. Um, but yeah, I think that's probably going to be it. Great to have seen them. And also, we didn't even, even have to put food out for them. We didn't have to bait them. You know, they're so curious and they, they're so tame anyway. Like, you just don't need to do it. I appreciate uh, you can maybe get more creative if you do do it. And that's something I might explore in the future. But yeah, for now, I'm very happy uh, with how this evening has gone. And I hope you've enjoyed it. And I hope I'll see you on my channel again soon. It's so typical for me to end the video and then have a moment like the one I just did. But if you're still watching, then thank you for that. And I'm about to show you something awesome. Definitely my best picture of the night. I was literally like a few houses away from mine. And then everything just lined up with this fox. The lighting was perfect. It stood and watched me for what felt like a minute or two. It probably was, to be honest. It was for a while. And yeah, I managed to get some awesome shots. So have a look at this. What a way to end the video and thanks again for watching.